to Graduate School 101 for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. My name is Luis Molina and I am the Project Director for Project Upgrads. Project Upgrads is a grant um, from the U.S. Department of Education and we do a lot of workshops. We focus a lot on providing access and resources to students like yourselves, right, to apply to grad school and also once you're admitted into grad school so that you're successful and you graduate in a timely manner. Um, so I'm glad you guys were able to join us today. Uh, let me see a few things I do have to say is that I am recording for those that, um, so that we can provide these uh, slides, the video to students that couldn't make it today. Um, another thing, since we are grant funded, we will be sending evaluations at the end of the presentation. So expect an email with the survey. Super quick, things like about maybe one minute, if that, um, that helps us out a lot because we have to prove that we're actually doing what we said what we would do. And we also want to make sure that we're providing uh, the information that you all need and value. So with that being said, this presentation is meant to be an overview of the uh, of preparing you know, your application or what should you do right now to start looking into grad school. And then we'll get into a little bit about applying, but it's meant to be an overview, very general per se. Um, we, I encourage you to make an appointment with Areli who's gonna introduce yourself in a second after this presentation. If you're serious about applying to grad school and you want you know, uh, to bounce some ideas off of her, you have more questions, um, you want to know the application process, how it is specifically for you, right? So um, I, I will uh, encourage you for you all to do that. And uh, we'll provide a web page down the line uh, that'll allow you to get access to this information, allow you to book an appointment with Areli, um, and a few other resources as well. Uh, throughout the presentation, we'll have a few moments for questions, but questions uh, that are related towards, you know, what just, what was covered, right? So we'll do a couple of slides. We'll break for questions, if there are any, um, but questions that relate to the, to the material that we covered. Because more than likely, from what I've seen is that there's a lot of questions that, that, that are asked that are going to be covered in the next section. So we have a few sections, right? So remember, ask questions uh, for the information that has been provided. Anything, if anything's unclear, um, and, and then we'll continue on. By the end of the presentation, I think a lot of the questions might be answered, um, but even then we'll have some time at the end to answer your specific questions or something, it maybe something wasn't clear to you. Okay, so with that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleagues who are gonna do the majority of this presentation. Thank you, Luis. Hello everyone, it's nice to see you. Uh, my name is Areli Gonzalez and I'm the program manager for the Project Upgrads grant. Um, I work with um, prospective students like yourselves who are thinking of going to graduate school at CSUF, but I also work with graduate students, supporting them um, with a fellowship program that we have established for them. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but I'm happy to see you. I put on the chat box the link where you can make an appointment with me. Um, so if you have any questions, like Louis said, um, you can put them in the chat box or you can wait until we hit those. Go ahead, Stephanie, you can go. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, let's start with the presentation. I'm going to start sharing my screen right now. Okay. Slideshow. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Vega. I'm the Administrative Support Coordinator for Project Upgrads. Thank you for joining us today for the Graduate School 101 presentation for the College of Engineering and Computer Science. So for today's agenda, we'll be going over the introduction to graduate school, finding a school and program, the application process, graduate school funding, and available resources. So why go to graduate school? This question is going to be very individual and personal to each and one of you, um, but there are many benefits to attending. These are a list of reasons of why you should be attending graduate school. 
the main reason would be a greater income potential. Everyone likes money. Um, by having that master's degree, there are some positions that do provide a greater salary to individuals who have that master's. I'm pretty sure most of you all have looked up positions online and have noticed that for some of the job requirements, it may say that they prefer a master's degree. Um, to those individuals that have that, they might have a higher chance in receiving those positions just by having that degree. But again, these um, reasons are all going to be different for each and one of you. And these are some of the potential jobs that we felt would benefit you all, especially being from the College of ECS, but these are just limited. Differences in degree. We felt like this visual was very important to show you all, um, just so you can see the difference by having a bachelor's degree and a graduate degree. These quantities and these amounts are different depending on the industry and also the position. So if you'd like uh, more information, please check out the Georgetown University website. And what does graduate school look like? Graduate school varies from person to person. It might depend on their workload and also might depend on how much responsibilities they might decide to take on. Um, for example, in these pictures, if you have no sleep and no caffeine, then you might end up feeling like the first guy there. But again, it completely depends from person to person. And what does graduate school look like? Um, as an undergrad, it is more structured. You are currently attending class, you're expected to retain the information, and then you're gonna be quizzed on it towards the end. For graduate school, it's different. It's more of a discussion. There's more, uh, it's more of an autonom it's more autonomous, and there's also, you're expected to create new knowledge compared to being an undergrad. So for, as for academics, as an undergraduate, you're expected to have a 2.0 GPA or higher. If you have a 3.0, you are considered to be in good standing. Um, as for a graduate student, if you have anything below a 3.0, you'll be placed on academic probation. Hopefully none of you all end up in that situation, but those are the academic policies in place. As for the courses as an undergrad, you might be attending lecture probably four to five times a week. As a graduate student, you might attend once or twice a week, and they may be approximately three hours long. And as a graduate student, um, having taking six units, you might be considered part-time, and nine units would be considered full-time. And the reason it, it is the way it is because attending graduate school, it's a little more rigorous, and you're expected a lot more. Culminating experience. Each graduate student is expected to fulfill um, one of the three choices from a thesis, project, and comprehensive examination. Since you are all part of uh, the College of ECS, you'll probably, for your master's, be uh, told to do a thesis or a project. But again, it varies from program to program. There are some programs that might let you choose one from the three options. Now finding a school and program. But what to do now? First, discover your interests, research schools and programs, and prepare for your application. And learning about what interests you about your field. Um, in order to strengthen your application, it is recommended to attend conferences, to participate in research projects, and also take on, taking on internships. This will definitely help you. It will help you decide whether going into that field, it, if it's something you'd like in the future. Um, but yes, these are just some of the reasons. And developing your faculty references. For some graduate programs, you will be expected to submit some letters of recommendation. That's why it's important to strengthen those relationships with your professors now. It can start off as being informal, going to their office hours virtually. And just asking the questions and then engaging with them from there. Have them get to know you, have them know your academic interest, because then you'll be able to get a stronger letter of recommendation from them. Finding a school and program. First things first, create your own rankings for schools. Some program rankings are worth more than school rankings. And as well, finding a graduate program that will fit your goals, fitting your academic and financial goals such as maybe you might be inclined to attending a public school versus a private school. 
and how to gather th those information. If you already have some universities in mind, such as possibly Fullerton, Dominguez, or even Long Beach, you can check out the programs they offer. As well, you can see the list of faculty members there, see the, the research they're working on, and seeing if that's something you'd like to do in the future. We also have these websites available, such as petersons.com and gradschool.com. They'll be able to give you more information and also help you find graduate schools as well. So we reached our first uh, break. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to use, to um, send them in the chat box feature. You can also unmute yourself and we'll be happy to answer those questions for you. So I actually did have a question. Um, well, um, earlier you were, oh, can anyone hear me? Hello? Hello, oh sorry. It's kind of hard to hear you. Oh. Um, Is this better? Yes. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, so my question was when you're, when you're looking for um, these different colleges and you want to kind of see what the faculty is up to, and see what kind of projects they're working on. Um, you, you mentioned that you should an, an attach, attach a resume. Um, what exactly would they be looking for? Would they just kind of see um, what kind of projects you were involved in outside of school? Uh, would you be able to help that with that question, Liz? That, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, so um, earlier, uh, it was mentioned that when you're looking at different universities to kind of see where you want to go for the uh, their grad programs, um, you would look at the faculty and see what they're up to, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was mentioned that you should uh, kind of reach out to them and include your resume. I just wanted to know, were they looking for some specific projects that would pertain to what they're up to? Or are, are they looking, what exactly are they looking for? Um, well, I'm not sure. You might have understood. Um, I'm, I don't. I don't know if we suggested to send the resume, uh, but if you are, yeah, like, but the first part, is, yeah, correct. If you are looking at other schools, um, oh, it says attach your resume right there. Um, the most important part is to when you're applying to grad school. Is, you know, obviously, you're applying because you have an interest in the field, right? Right. Um, so therefore, you want to kind of pursue that and, and, and schools vary, you know, between what they're actually focused on. So if you're like civil, mechanical or um, computer and you have a focus in something, right, um, you want, you're going to want to want faculty that are already engaging in, in that type of research. Um, attaching the resume just kind of um, will give you some credibility as far as, well, this is what I've done in this field already. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe I can be of help, right? Because if, if you're reaching out to a faculty member and you're asking them about the research and how most of the time, um, you know, uh, it's not so common in ACS, but it is common in um, like uh, sciences and math. Um, you more than likely have to be admitted to that professor's lab uh, for you to be admitted to a program. So you're kind of making a pitch to like, you know, I kind of, you know, want to, would like to work with you. Um, and then this, this is why uh, I would be an asset in a sense, kind of, that's why you would attach a resume. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Whereas say maybe someone doesn't have the, the experience, then the, the faculty member can, you know, can probably will still offer some advice or will still answer some questions. Mm -hmm. But if there was a chance that they were looking for someone for like a research assistant or something like that, uh, and you fit, and you would fit those characteristics, you might do yourself a favor by attaching that resume and, and potentially maybe getting a, a research assistant uh, job with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of a that's kind of your your way of of kind of you know. Um, letting them know that you would be willing to, to help them or take on a, a research, research assistantship position. Okay, cool, thanks. Any more questions? Okay, we, we're gonna have also another um, breaking point 
uh, throughout the presentation. So if you have any more questions, you can also save those toward the end. So applying to grad school at Cal State Fullerton. Hopefully, Cal State Fullerton is your number one choice and you decided to continue with the application. So in order to apply Cal State Fullerton, keep in mind it's a two-step process. In order to be admitted, you need to be admitted through the university, you need to be CSU ed eligible, and you also have to be admitted into the program department. Each program is going to have their own set of requirements, so please make sure to do your research and just uh, making sure you're up um, with those deadlines as well. And how to apply to the university. You can, the first step would be submitting an application via Cal State Apply, uh, the Cal State edu slash apply and then additionally since you are all Cal State Fullerton students you will need to submit your transcripts and also if you if you're a transfer student and all your transcripts were transferred over to Cal State Fullerton then the university has those transcripts so you'll they'll be able to receive them from there and how to apply to the program so as mentioned each program and department has your specific requirements so please make sure to see what they're asking for. You can check out these requirements through the department as well. You can also send an email to the grad program advisor. Each program has their own advisor that specializes in helping students. And then as well on the Cal State Apply application. There are some programs that might require you to submit those materials on that website, or you might also have to submit them directly to the department. It just varies, um, but please just do your research because we wouldn't want you to miss any deadlines. So for the application deadlines, the first one, as mentioned, the university application, and then the second would be the program department application. So please make sure to check up on those. And then if you need more assistance, and if you want the full list of programs, you can also check them out on the Office of Graduate Studies website, which is listed on the screen and as well for the Office of, Ad of Admissions, if you need any more assistance with that. And then these are some of the programs offered at ECS. Feel free to check them out. And if there's one that you're interested in, reach out to the program advisor. And if you'd like to start your application, please make an appointment with us. Just know we're here to assist you with any questions you may have. And then questions, this is our second breaking point. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Or you can also unmute yourself. Okay, see one. All right, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd just like to know the difference between those two uh, software engineering programs that you just showed. Yeah, one of them is accelerated. Yeah, I wanted to know that too. Uh, from which ones? Uh, I just want to know, like, uh, like, what's the difference between the accelerated and the online version? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one that's strictly, strictly online um, that obviously gives you the, the uh, benefit of taking it anywhere. I know we have students from other states that are taking that one as well. But I, as far as like the actual material that's covered, I wouldn't know if there's a difference or, or, or not. Um, obviously, one has accelerated in the name. It might obviously you, you'll take a little bit, probably maybe nine units, something like that. But the best thing would to do would be to make your way over to the website and kind of read up on that since there's a quite a, a you know a, a bunch of graduate programs we I, I can't you know we can't remember everything um, um, what do you call it off the top of our heads there's like 55 different programs that we offer as a school but um, yeah the best thing to do is to check out their website they'll say a description and then they'll they'll mention a graduate program advisor and that'll be the person that's the expert in that program. Usually they're a faculty member that also teach in that program. So of course they'll, they'll be able to give you a, a much more precise answer than, than we can. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. No, no problem. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to hand it off over to Arely and she's going to be going more with the funding. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, let me share my screen so you can see the PowerPoint. Um, and if one of you can tell me if you can see my screen. 
where I'm sharing? Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, so we're gonna talk about funding for graduate school. I know this is a topic that's very important for everyone that's applying to a graduate program. So let's start. The first one is the State University Grant. This is only offered to CSUs. So if you're planning to come to Fullerton or any other CSU, you may be able to apply to this grant um, via a financial aid application. And it could be either the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act, um, depending on your situation. It is also important that you file before March 2nd, um, just because this, um, the grant is limited um, and the pot of money that is reserved for graduate students is very small. So in order for you to be um, able to be considered for the grant, um, it is recommended that you do it before March 2nd or by the deadline. And it's also based on your income. So depending on the information that you provide through your um, application, you, it will be determined whether you meet the, the requirement in order to receive it. And it is okay for you to apply even before you have been admitted to a program. Um, it is actually recommended that you do that. Um, but if you have more questions about this grant or you want to learn more about it, we are going to have a workshop in November where we can talk more in depth about what this state university grant looks like as a graduate student and how to apply for it. And all of you who are in this presentation will be invited to that. Or if you want to make an appointment with me and we can talk more about it, um, we can also do that. Uh, for the loans, um, you need to know that for graduate students, there are not, there are no more subsidized loans. Um, if you go into a graduate program, so these are some of the informations. Like I said, um, this topic gets very tricky, and we want to make sure that we provide the best information that we can. So, like I said, in November, we're going to cover this more in depth. Um, but these are some of the websites that you can look at: um, financial aid application. Um, I, I'm sorry, the financial aid website. Uh, that it's listed there has some very detailed information in case that you're looking for that um, but like I said you'll be invited to that workshop and then we can talk more about it or you can make an appointment with me if that's easier for you and scholarships there are scholarships um, for graduate students we'll talk about more ones that are more specific to ECS but these scholarships, um, we recommend that you go into the college website or the program website because sometimes the departments post scholarships that graduate students or undergraduates can apply to. And this vary by amount and by requirements. And some of these scholarships are merit-based and some are not. So it's just good to do your research to make sure that you're looking for what um, they're looking for and sort of like make a list of the scholarships that are offered. This is another one. Like I said, these are maybe specific to ECS, um, but like I said, go to the website, take a look at them. There may be some changes in requirements or changes in deadlines, so it is very crucial that you also look for this on your own. And so this is a scholarship that I was telling you about that is specific um, for four colleges in the university for graduate students. And one of the colleges that participates in this program, it's ECS. Um, we offer a $1,000 scholarship for graduate students. And it's a program meaning that we provide you with faculty mentorship and professional development workshops, um, in addition to, of course, the funding. Um, but we also um, want to let you know that there's 48 open spots that we provide this scholarship to. Um, this scholarship is not um, merit-based, meaning that we don't take a look at your GPA, we don't ask you to write essays, um, or application process is very simple. Um, we open applications on spring 2021. So if you have any questions about this fellowship, like I said, you can always meet with me. I'm the one of the persons that supports students when they're in the fellowship. So we can talk more about the application process, what it looks like to be part of the program once you receive it. But we encourage you to apply, even though you have not gotten an admission decision. Once we decide whether you receive this fellowship or not, we can just double check that you will be a student on campus and then we'll move forward with the process. Another scholarship that is available to graduate students on campus is the Ellibar Scholarship. 
this scholarship used to be run by another grant that was given to the university. And that's how it was, it was established. Um, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Luis, um, there's open spots between 20 and 21 open spots for graduate students. The application process is simple as well. Um, their application opens as well on spring. So take a look at the website. We put that website there for you to, to find more information, to look for the contact person of, of who's running the fellowship. It's a little bit more of funding in this fellowship, um, but that may vary as well, depending on, on what's going on right now with the whole pandemic and all that. But like I said, it is very important that you do your research and that if you have any questions about it, that you reach out to the people that are listed on the website. And then another way to support your funding um, for graduate school is by doing graduate assistantships or teaching assistantships. I think for ECS, it's more common to do graduate assistantships or working on labs with um, professors. Some of these positions may be posted on the Career Center website. Um, not all of them, so we always encourage you to always look at the program um, website or the department to see if they have any postings there or talk to your faculty. Sometimes they don't make the announcements, like I said, um, university-wide. So it's important just to keep good communication with the people that you want to work with and you know, establish that relationship with them. And so now that we talk about funding, um, imagine that you have been admitted to Fullerton, you're ready to be a graduate student on campus. We wanna help you transition from undergrad to grad with help of the Office of Graduate Studies. And this is an office that supports all graduate students on campus. They make sure that you are taken care of um, in terms of making sure that you're graduating on time, that your study plan is filed, um, and that you're meeting all the requirements in order for you to be in good academic standing. So some of the resources that they provide is academic policy support, advising. Um, I hope none of you fall into academic probation, but if that is the case, there is support for you to help you come out of academic probation with advising and with workshops. They also, once you're ready to graduate, they do grad graduation check support, making sure that you're ready to go and receive your degree. Um, they are located in College Park, um, but as of right now, they are not open. As you know, the university is not open, but here's the website. They are um, answering questions via email, so you can find their contact information there as well. And then part of the Graduate of, um, Office um, is the Graduate Student Success Center. And this is just like any resource center that you've seen on campus. Um, the only difference is that this is only for graduate students. And you can go there, you can study, you can meet with your classmates. There's other resources available, like they have a food pantry. They also gra have graduate success consultants. And these are just tutors that can help you with projects that you're working on on your project, uh, on your graduate program. For example, if you have to write a paper or you're writing a thesis, um, the graduate success consultants may be able to help you format it or polish it um, before you submit it. As of right now, they're not open, as you know, but um, they are located in the south side of the Pollock Library in the third floor, and their information is also listed on the Office of Graduate Studies website. So that's it for me. If you have any questions, I think I saw the chat um, flashing, but if not, you can admit yourself as well and then we can take um, care of those.